Hello everyone and welcome to episode 45 of our game dev tutorials. Today I have a request from a patron um, for text wrapping. Uh, essentially what they're asking for is a uh, a way to enter a bunch of text and have it come out kind of like a paragraph. And so um, that's what we're going to do today. Um, it's not an overly long process, but um, it can be a little bit tricky, and there's a decent amount of logic that goes into it. So we'll go over all of that as we create it. Then we'll put it into the character menu and we'll test it. Okay? Um, but before we get started, uh, I want to remind you guys to hit the like button down below. It really does help push the videos and makes a big difference um, on to how many people get to see the video and therefore how fast our community grows. Um, I want to mention that there already is a game on coming soon for Steam based off of these tutorials. So uh, eventually I will be doing a showcase for that. Um, and that goes for all of your guys' games. If you guys are making a game based at least a decent amount on these tutorials, I mean, it doesn't have to be 100%, it doesn't have to even be 50%, but if it's based a decent amount on these tutorials and uh, you let me know when you have keys available on Steam or wherever it is that you have them, then I will do a showcase for you. I also know that there's at least one game on the Google App Store as well, Google Play Store. Um, lastly, guys, uh, if I'm exhausted, I, I'm sorry if I'm not sounding quite uh, enth as enthusiastic. I'm trying to, but um, you know, the lead up to Guilds of Delinar is in full swing. It's exactly one week, actually minus a few hours, but it's a a week from today, uh, the game comes out. So if you guys haven't wishlisted it, it would mean a lot to me if you guys would. Um, and, you know, supporting me in buying my games is basically the same as supporting me in any other way. Uh, it helps me to keep doing what I'm doing. And it will help me to do it in a better way. Uh, so please consider doing that. And lastly, Discord, if you guys haven't joined it, make sure you do. Um, Discord is where I'm at pretty consistently so um you're welcome to pop on and ask questions and i will answer them the best i can um yeah okay so we want to come in here we don't have any new art so let's just get rid of that for now and then it's an output structure so let's add it here um and i call it text zone call it whatever you want um, but text zone um, text area is a little different uh, text area to me is a thing that you type into kind of like a uh, on a, a website so that's why I called it text zone um, yeah so let's get this prepped let's take these out add our public let's grab the list of stuff from anywhere else the list of includes Okay, and we're good to start. Now, um, what goes into a text zone? Well, um, a decent amount, really. Not a hundred, not a million bajillion things, but a decent amount. We are going to want to know public int. We're going to want to know the uh, max width of the zone. So, um, this is maybe the very most important thing. Um, other than I guess the fact that the, te the text, but um, the max width is what we'll be cutting our string into. So uh, we'll go into more of that later, but that's important. Uh, then we'll have line height. So this is the amount of space between the, not between the lines, but from the start of one string to the start of the next string. Um, quite important for how it looks. It'll give you the ability to adjust it pretty nicely. Um, we have string, do not put public here. So I'm, I'm mentioning that. We are going to create another property for this because um, we do not want this edited outside of, uh, of this class. Uh, and you'll see why as we get to it. Okay? We'll need uh, vector twos for position and dims. And you're like, well, what do I need dims for? I have max width and line height. Yeah, it's just more efficient if you set your dims each time you change your string, and that way you don't have to recalculate it every time you need those dimensions. So um, it's helpful in an efficiency manner. It's not actually needed. Okay, um, we have a color. 
So public color, color. And that'll be the text color. Um, next thing we need is a font, obviously, because we can't draw anything without it. Sprite font, font. Unless you have it in globals, then you could actually do it from globals. Um, that's something you can get into is have standard text sizes uh, in your globals file and then uh, use those standard texts, maybe a small, medium, large text. And then um, from there, you're able to standardize all the text in your game and make it kind of look more congruent. But for now, I'm just going to have it in here. And then the last thing is the list of strings after we've chopped them up. Um, I call it lines, so equals new list of strings. Okay, so that's what we need. Um, it's it's not a lot, but it's not a little. It's it's you know, this is a a decent little class. I mean, it's not the hardest to write, but it's definitely something that takes a little bit of thinking. So public text zone, okay, and then in text zone we need to pass in vector two position or pose uh, the string. That we start with, uh, we need the max width, we need the line height, uh, string for the font, and color, font color. Why do I use the word font color here? So, so that when you're filling this uh, constructor later, it'll tell you font color so you're not confused about what the color is. All right. Uh, let's set all these equals. So pose equals pose. Uh, stir equals stir. Um, lowercase here, even though later we'll have a different option for that. So just keep that in mind. Max width equals max width. Uh, line height equals line height. Color equals font color. And uh, then here, if stir equal not equal blank, then we're going to parse it later. But we'll get to that in a minute. All right. So properties, uh, region, end region, and then here space properties. Why do we do that? So that if you had like 30 properties, then you can just close them because in general you only need to see it up here, and you'll probably understand there's already a property for it. So um, oftentimes it's just a lot of code to scroll through when you don't need to, and that's why we create the region. Okay, so public string capital S T R. And you'll have uh, get. leave this all in one line because it's just one thing but return string and then set and this is where we actually have something different um, we're gonna have uh, stir equals value and then we're gonna have the parsing which we'll put in there in a minute um, so let's just create a, a temporary for the parsing so public oops virtual void uh, parse lines okay now we can take this here and put it in the places that we needed it and here okay um, so why do we do it in this way instead of just calling the property at the bottom well the answer is is because you might process this string more uh, prior to getting to the bottom so um, we're not going to do that here, but there's a lot you can do with this base class, uh, and this flow is just uh, a little bit uh, more versatile for things you might do. Okay. Um, okay. So we have the parse lines that we need to deal with. Let's let's make the rest of our functions so that we know what we're doing. Um, obviously, we need to draw. So public virtual void draw, and that one's going to have offset to it as well. So vector two offset. Okay, so we know we have a draw function. We'll get to how to write in it later. And then uh, one other thing that I like to do is have a uh, set nims. So public 
virtual void set dims and then this needs to just know whatever the largest width is so int largest width and then here we're going to have the dimensions which are equal to new vector 2 um, the largest width as our width and then here we're going to have line height times lines so the number of total lines dot count okay so that'll give you the the width now you could use instead of using largest width you could use max width here um, and that would be fine um, but what's going to happen is you're going to have a set box and the text may not make it all the way across it and it's still going to use that as the hitbox so then you'll have this blank space at the end and you'll see that when we when we test it um, but you'll have this blank space at the end that uh, it still thinks is there and that's not a problem per se but it's suboptimal in certain circumstances so you're always welcome to use that if you like it better um, but there are times with overlapping of different things where uh, doing it this way causes less issues um, it's also more precise in my mind so that's why I do it this way you could just use max width here that's fine okay all right now for the uh, <clears throat> meat and potatoes or whatever you guys say in your countries uh, that would mean the, the bulk of it right this is the part that actually is um, what we're trying to do which is to parse these lines down and, and make a paragraph looking structure all right so lines dot clear so first thing we want to do is say all the lines we have go away um sorry I had to get a drink get my throat uh, wetted a bit okay right, um so that's the first thing um, now in order to create those lines I like to keep my words together you could choose not to if you wanted to um, or you could have two options like a bool up at the top that says you know whole words or not um, in this case we are only gonna do whole words <coughs> sorry um, so we need a list of strings called word list equals new list of strings okay that's one big thing then we need to have a focus string so uh, string temp string is new oh no nah, 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 just equals blank. okay so this is a list of all words and this is the string that we're currently focusing on um, so we'll talk about those more as we go next we need an int for the largest width and remember that's right here so this is this is what we're doing here and that's equal to zero to start with start at low so that you can make it larger if you wanted to make something smaller you start at high and work down uh, and then you have uh, current width equals zero also okay um, current width deals with where you're at in your line as you add one more word each time okay so we have all that awesome so uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to say um, if stir not equal blank meaning there is something left in in stir you know uh, string up here our base string <laughs> then yeah uh, also uh, if st and stir is not equal null and that does happen so especially if you initiate initialize it poorly um, so rather than letting it crash just do that error protection right there we're gonna do word list so word list here equals stir dot split and then we're splitting on the characters notice these are single quotes of a space and we are going to do that to string or sorry to list string okay um, so this now is a list of all of the words word is denoted by anything separated by a space uh, so 
This will not separate periods from your word. So like the last word, if you have a period there or a comma or an exclamation point or any kind of punctuation, it will not separate it. So um, keep that in mind, but that's okay. This will get you a working thing. You can then doctor it and do what you want with it. Okay, um, so now we need to loop for all words. So int i equals zero i less than word list dot count i plus plus. Okay, so this is our loop for all words. Uh, what are we going to do in the loop for all words? Well, first of all, we need to um, set the temp string. We need to check the length. We need to uh, create a new line when we need to. Okay, those are those are things that we got to do. So. Um, All right, so first we need to know whether we need a space after the string that we're working with. Um, so we need a, a, a space, I said a string, I mean in a space. So we need a space anytime that uh, temp string is not equal to uh, not equal to blank, right? Because you don't want to add a space before your line, okay? So here we go, we have uh, if, temp string not equal blank then temp string plus equals space okay so this would be like if there's a word in there we want to add a space after the word right because that we removed all the spaces here so we do have to add them back in okay so that's what that's doing um, the next thing we do is we say current width equals int font dot measure string temp string plus word list i dot x oh no dot x goes on here dot x um okay so what is this doing it's taking whatever's in temp string and adding the next word to it and measuring it so now we know how, how wide that width is, okay? If current width is greater than largest width and current width, width is less than or equal to max width, then largest width equals current width. So this is just keeping track of our largest width. If you're not doing largest width, you don't need this. Next, if current width is less than or equal to max width, then we say temp string plus equals word list i. Okay, so we're adding that word to the to the string. So let's this string starts out blank. We say if blank plus this word is less than the width, then we add it to it. Now it's got the first word in it. Then we come through, we add the space, we test the second word. If it's still less, we add the second word, then we, then we check the third word after adding the space, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the loop. And then uh, else, so this is, um, we're over max width now. For over max width, then we say lines dot add, and lines are what we're trying to get, that's the whole point, temp string, and then temp string equals, so not plus equals, just equals, word list i. So we're taking that next word in. Uh, if you don't do this, if you have one word that's longer than your, um, longer than your max width, it will infinite loop on you. You need to have this line because now it will essentially override everything in order to give you this ridiculous word that you have put into your your string um, so you know if you are Mary Poppins and you're doing supercalifragilisticexpialidocious maybe that's just too long of a word for your, your box but it'll still go in you won't in enter an infinite loop uh, you will have a weird looking thing on your screen but this is better than an infinite loop um, so put that there if you don't do this um, your temp string will come back just like it started with and be blank and then you'll into that whole process but this also saves you some calculation time so that's a good thing too because 
it saves you one looping bit there. Okay. Um, and where are we? Uh, we have lines that we, we need to. Okay. So the last string, right? You loop through, you loop through, you loop through, and maybe you have like one word left. Well, it's obviously not over your max width. Because it's not over your max width, you don't add it. So we need to make sure that we add the last line. Um, so if uh, temp string not equal blank lines dot add temp string. Okay. So this is just after you do all this looping, whatever's left in temp string, put it in there. If there is anything, because it actually could be blank. It's possible. Okay, um, and then the last thing we're going to do is we are at, at uh, right before we're done and out of here is we're going to say set dims, and then we use largest width. Okay, so that now every time we update the string, we're also updating our dimensions. Um, and this math right here, so the creating of the vector two and then the multiplication is what gets saved each and every time that you uh, call for dims. Is that a lot? No. But is it something? Yeah, of course it is. It's something. So you want to, you know, you want to be efficient where you can be. So that's an example of one way to do that. Okay, so now we know we need to loop out all of our lines for the draw. So let's create that structure. So for int i equals zero i less than lines dot count i plus plus. Um, we need to do our sprite patch call for each line. So globals dot sprite batch dot draw string and I always do this in the wrong order because when I created my own structure uh, I, I changed the order so um, bear with me here if I get it all wrong uh, font is the first thing let's see the next thing is the string itself so that's uh, lines I and the next thing is position um, so the, we'll come back to that. And then we have the color, so that's color. All right, position. Well, first offset, because that's important. And then we add a new vector two. And then we have uh, pose x, pose y. And then we are going to add to y. We're going to add line height. Times i. So that's where we're drawing. I forgot the period there. Okay, that's it. All right, guys, that is our structure. So we have 133 lines, and count, counting everything. Not too bad. Um, and this is all it takes to wrap some text. So let's go and let's put it in. Let's go to. Um, characters menu there we go and then um, in here we are now going to have a uh, text zone not just a hero so public text zone there we go text zone okay and here we're gonna say text zone equals new text zone and then uh, new vector two zero zero because we'll place it with the offset. Uh, we have the string that we we are going to draw, which we'll get to that in a minute. We have our max width, which uh, to me should be less than the size of the screen. So one way to do that is uh, dims dot x times point nine f. So we have the dimensions of the hole, um, and then we multiply it times 0.9f. We need to properly print this. There we go. Uh, line height, how about just 22? That's fine. Um, the string for our font, we'll get to in a second. And then how about color? Dot, what about gray? Gray sounds good. It's different than the black we used for our uh, character name. So on and so forth. So f the font we've been using is font Arial 16. So we'll stick with that for now. 
Now the text. Um, I am not going to type out a bunch of text. Type whatever you want in there. Um, I am going to use a bit of story about my games because why not, right? Um, and it's about Zavix, and Zavix is the cool mage in the game. And uh, anyway, talks about him a little bit. No big deal. Um, but it's just long. It's a long piece of text. I don't want to type it all out right now. So yeah. All right. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw it out. So that is the <laughs> arguably the most important part, right? Um, but text zone dot draw. And then here we're going to use top left plus new vector 2. And then give it a small space off from the right. 10 pixels should do. And then drop it down a bit. So 100 probably is fine. OK. So we have all this. Um, and we're ready to test it. We'll see if I didn't break everything this time. Ooh, I didn't like that. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Let's grab my prompt. I bet you I just put a print in wrong. This is a copy paste from my. Huh. Okay, well, let's troubleshoot it then. So we got our words separated, that's good. Not set to an instance of an object. Font didn't get set. Whoops-a-daisy. That's an easy fix. Font equals globals.content.load sprite font. <laughs> That's a mistake, huh? Okay, now let's see if we didn't destroy the world here. Huh. Fonts. Like I said, guys, I'm a bit tired. Um, I apologize. Character menu fonts try that again all right we went through this time I apologize guys lots of hours of work and then we push C and there's our text it's wrapped and see I mentioned that you would have extra space on the side now some of that's gonna be from the the 90 percent but some of it's gonna be just none of these lines made it quite perfect so you're gonna have a little bit of extra space so this is um, some text wrapping Okay, you can do a lot with this. You can make it so that it always is, you know, justified out to the ends. You can uh, make it so that instead of using words, you use individual characters. You can do a lot of things. This is just a simple version, and it works well. And you guys can then use it to do what you need to do with it to make yourself some text blobs. Um, all right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, again, guys, uh, if you haven't checked out Guilds of Delinar, please do. You can find a link to my Steam account down in the description, and from there it'll take you to all my games. But specifically, Guilds of Delinar is the one that I'm most focused on at this point, uh, though I am going to be updating some of the old games uh, hopefully next month because it's been a while and I need to do it. Um, guys, like the video if you haven't already. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, uh, I would love it if you would subscribe. Um, obviously there are some things that hopefully I can help you with. Um, and yeah, put out a new video every week. You know, come join me on Discord, ask me questions, and uh, join the community. Alright guys, I will talk to you guys all later. Have a good one.